Bobby, America First host Dr. Sebastian Gorka, Sand Stories by Joe Castillo, former Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon, Holiday Harmonies with the Katina. That's Trey Corley in the Music City Connection. And I'm your announcer, Keith Filbury. And now, here's Mike Huckabee! Very Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope that you are having a wonderful Christmas weekend and that under your tree are all the things that you wanted. Because I know what you really wanted, a bunch of socks, underwear, <laughs> cologne. And I'm sure under your tree, all that stuff is there and you're going to love it this weekend, aren't you? Absolutely. Hey, you know, we have romanticized the Christmas event as if it was a Hallmark movie. But quite frankly, the real story is quite different than the sweet Christmas pageants that most of us have seen at church or maybe in the movies, where there are angels singing and Mary, the mother of Jesus, is calmly holding her newborn son while Joseph stands nearby looking on a quiet and immaculate scene. Well, it actually went down a little differently than that. Have you ever been in a barn with farm animals? You remember how it smelled? Not like a bakery, <laughs> that's for sure. And the place where Jesus was born wasn't some nice big red barn like you might see in Iowa. No, it was really a little cave where animals could be herded to keep them out of the weather. Now, I don't know of a delicate way to say this, but instead of imagining a nice, clean, sterile place with fresh, clean hay for a newborn, think instead of a rock-walled cave cut out from a mountainside where sheep, donkeys, and perhaps other animals were eating and sleeping. I mean, to be honest with you, it had maybe the smell more of an outhouse or a zoo than a Hilton. We have historically castigated the innkeeper for putting Joseph and Mary in the same place as the animals, but because everyone was required to go to their place of birth for a census, accommodations were frankly hard to come by. Now this wasn't a Marriott, by the way. That's not how it worked back then. This was just some guy who would rent out a vacant room to travelers and his limited space was already occupied. He could have just sent them on their way, but he did the best he could by giving them what he had. You know, that's really all any of us can do. Give what we have, not what we wish we had. So don't be so tough on the innkeeper. In this scene, Mary's in labor. She's ready to deliver. Now, I was in the room when all three of my children were born. I'm pretty sure that there in Bethlehem, this was not a silent night, okay? <laughs> Especially since it was her first birth and there was no doctor to administer an epidural. There was no nurse standing by to assist. Her mother wasn't there either, not even a close friend. All she had was Joseph, her teenage husband-to-be. She was probably between 14 and 15 years old, not, not this mature woman that we've thought of. And Joseph wasn't exactly able to be of much help since he was probably scared out of his mind. Far from home, here was a baby about to be born that he knew wasn't his, and he's supposed to believe that the father wasn't some other teenage boy, but God. Folks, it takes a lot of faith to believe that. I'm pretty sure there was some screaming and crying going on, and when the baby was born, the Bible tells us that Mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Swaddling clothes? You've heard that all your life. It just means that she took some cloths and wrapped him very tightly in them like a little burrito and put him in a food dish for the animals. Because that's what a manger is. It's a food dish where the animals gobbled up their dinner. And it was in this filthy, lonely, smelly, and forsaken place that God showed up to save the world. 
Probably not the way that you or I would have planned it. I mean, his birth was hardly fit for a king, barely appropriate for a poor refugee from a third world country. But it wasn't a mistake. God's timing for the birth wasn't off like it was our own first child. When that happened, our doctor assured us that it was a girl. Our doctor told us just before Thanksgiving that instead of a December 15th due date, which was the original one, the baby was going to be late and expect the arrival right around Christmas Day. So the doctor, having predicted the birth, being a month or more away, headed off to deer camp to go deer hunting. And the little bundle showed up four days later. <laughs> and the she was a he. <laughs> yeah, he got that wrong too. But in Bethlehem, God was right on time. And there was no mistake in his arriving in such an humble and frankly degrading circumstance. Because even in his arrival, he identified with the lowliest and least desirable place imaginable. And you know, Jesus still shows up in places we might not ever expect. You'll probably think that he'll be in the castle with the finest people. But Jesus will actually show up in the smelly little caves to be near the neediest people. That, that is the real Christmas. And the good news is... He is still showing up in places you wouldn't think he'd ever go in order to love and save the people that you might not expect him to care about. But aren't you glad he does? Because that's how he found us. We've got a wonderful show for you tonight. A great interview with my good friend, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, is right after the break. And a lot more Christmas celebrating as well. Stay tuned for more on Huckabee. MikeHuckabee.com and sign up for his free newsletter and follow at GovMikeHuckabee on Twitter. And welcome back and Merry Christmas. And don't you love the Christmas decorations here on the uh, set of the theater? We are just blown away by the wonderful, wonderful decorating that our team has done to make you feel like it's Christmas. Dr. Sebastian Gorka is a renowned national security expert, a strategist, and former deputy assistant to President Donald Trump. He was on hand at Mar-a-Lago last month to hear his former boss announce that he's running again for his old job. He says the response there was electric, as we expected it probably would be there. But will it be enough to make Donald Trump the 47th president of the United States. Please welcome back to the show one of our dear friends, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Great to have you back. Great to be back, Governor. Before, I, before, yes. we start, before we start, people don't know that uh, even when it's not Christmas, all the guests get a little goodie bag after they leave. Yeah. And, and your Huckabee mug has got pride of place in my green room ah. at my radio studio. So I thought the least I could do for Christmas is to give you the hottest selling item from my website, sebgorka.com. It's a little serious, but everybody wants it. So this is your America First mug. Wonderful. With a very serious message. I like it. Uh, the FBI is <laughs> Biden's Gestapo. It's a serious message. Oh, look at that. That is the hottest selling thing on our website. I believe That's that is. That's for you. Merry Christmas. I will be drinking coffee from this <laughs> cup before 24 hours are over. I wouldn't and say hot tonight. Chocolate. For Christmas. Don't forget the hot chocolate. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> My wife will have spiced tea out of that. Very something nice. that she likes and I don't, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, I don't think you're surprised that President Trump is running. I don't think any of us are. No. What do you feel is going to be the biggest challenge? Because there are a lot of people that say, hey, look, you know what? Uh, he's just said so many things that bothered people and they want to move on. What does he have to overcome? 
He has to overcome two things. Number one, people have to stop this issue with the style or the mean tweets. Whenever somebody says that to me, yeah. I say, have a look at your 401k. Yeah. Get back to me. Look at the price of gas. How about your grandkids? Can they get formula for your grandkids, for the, for the babies? If, if the answer is no, or the price of gas is too high, or my 401k is tanked, who is the person who created an economy the likes of which we've never seen before? And then secondly, for those who think America's past my old boss, which incumbent president got more votes than any other president since 1776? It's President Trump. So the guy who got the most votes as an incumbent is the old, old pony. I don't buy it. I've heard people say that... Uh... Republicans run great campaigns. Democrats run great elections. Yeah. And I think that that's a good distinction. Yeah. You know, we don't understand. We've run all these issues. We've, we've sold our points. How do we lose? Well, we lose because they're working on the elections and we're working on the campaign. They're the ones going to the old people's homes. Yeah. They're the ones who are saying, OK, we will organize for weeks on end. And I, I get it. A conservative radio hosts, friends of mine say, don't forget to go and vote on polling day. Take 10 people with you. It doesn't matter if they've collected 50, 500 ballots in the preceding five weeks. It's a sad, sad reality. We just simply have to be more organized. What is the biggest challenge you think Republicans are going to be facing with a new Congress? We're going to have a new uh, speaker. At least they'll be in charge. But there's even some, you know, some tension as we get ready for these guys to take over. What's, uh... I think you know what the biggest challenge is, given your history and uh, the history of... Uh, <laughs> My colleague in the White House, your daughter, yeah. it's a lack of spine. Well, You're a fighter, definitely. Governor. Yep. Sarah is a fighter. Yeah. You love America. We need a GOP. We need a speaker. We need to have Republicans who act as if they love America. No more footsie under the table with the Democrats. No more Marquis of Queensbury rules, because the other side doesn't play by Marquis of Queensbury ru yeah. rules. They tried to impeach our president twice. They've got political prisoners, January 6th prisoners, in solitary for years on end, two years, yeah. without due process. It's time for us to take the gloves off and play hardball. So the biggest challenge is for the GOP to grow a spine next year. You know, it's a little more than a week. I think our audience agrees with that. Um, in just a little more than a week, we're going to uh, see the new Congress takeover, January the 3rd. And so one of the questions, will they open le legitimate investigations, not to be mean, not to get revenge, right. but to find out who at the Department of Justice and the FBI knowingly lied to a FISA court to get a warrant to spy on and to try to uh, really stage yeah. nothing less than a coup d'etat against a sitting president. Will they do that? When I was in the White House, I requested by name three of my former students to be detailed to me to work in the White House, which is very standard. A deputy wants sure. somebody to be detailed, and they said, no problem, about seven days. We just have to pass their clearances over from the DOJ. Okay. Six months later, they hadn't appeared. Every week, HR is blowing me off. Finally, a very senior FBI agent comes to the White House on other business, and he peels off to come and see me. And he says this to me. Now, think of this in America. He said, Seb, off the record, those agents you requested to be detailed to you as a deputy to the president, you're never getting them. Because the seventh floor of the Hoover building, that's the director, the yeah. management, quote, looks at this president as the enemy. He actually, he actually said that said, to you. The Wow. Enemy. The elected president of the uh, United elected States. Elected by 64 million people, is deemed by members of the executive who carry badges and guns uh, to be the enemy. That's how serious the challenge is for the GOP and how much they have to clean up the Stygian stables that is DC. I hope they truly understand that that's the kind of thing that destroys a true democracy. When I hear people talk about the enemies of democracy, it is not some parent going to a school board meeting and demanding to know what their kids are being taught. It's people who, as you say, brilliantly said, have badges and guns and can ruin our lives who are not fulfilling the integrity of the Constitution. It's not the pro-life activist with seven children who had a misdemeanor charge mm -hmm. dropped against him 
and has his house raided by 24 FBI agents pointing loaded guns at his wife while his children are screaming, don't take our daddy away. In that scenario, the Hauk family, I'll tell you who the enemies mm. of the state are. And it pains me to say this, Governor. The enemies of the state are the FBI managers who ordered that raid against that pro-life man and the agents who didn't say, excuse me, ASAC, Smith, here's my badge, here's my gun. I'm not your Gestapo. Mm. Those people have sworn, sworn their oath to America. And that's why this is not a joke. That's mm. real. Thank you very much for making it straight. Now, I'm confident you're going to check out more from Dr. Gorka. And to do that, if you'll head over to Huckabee.tv, where we've got social media links, plus how and when to listen to the America First show on Salem Radio. Also, this book, Dr. Gorka has written, The War for America's Soul. Folks, there really is a war for America's soul, and Dr. Gorka makes that pretty clear in this book. Links to how to get it at Huckabee.tv. One thing I know is that Keith Bilbrey is feeling very Christmassy. So I'm going to let him tell us what we have coming up after the break. Well, coming up, a very special Christmas gift to the world from sand artist Joe Castillo on Huckabee. Welcome back and Merry Christmas to all. Now I've had this remarkable artist on my show before and his work never fails to move and inspire our entire audience. He's performed in over 20 nations and on many TV shows, including the finals of America's Got Talent. Here to provide us with a beautiful symbol of Christmas is pastor, author, and very unique sand artist, Joe Costello.
is so amazing to see this and to think that in just a few moments, with nothing but sand, you basically told us the whole gospel story. That's exactly what it is. And telling stories is really what it's all about. I mean, that's how we find out about God. He told us his story. And so we're just sharing stories with others. But what an amazing process. I can see why you hit it to the finals of America's Got Talent. You've got talent, Joe. There's no oh. doubt about it. I mean, this isn't your only talent. <laughs> Not your only one. You've written this book called Love Letters, really written for young women, right? Uh, that's true. But the whole purpose of writing the book was that we're living in a biblically illiterate culture. We are. And I was trying to encourage my daughters. Yeah to read the scriptures. But the beautiful thing about it is that as somebody that reads the book, yeah. they not only get a good story, but Psalm 119 is woven entirely through it and they wind up reading the whole thing. You're quite right. There's a lot of biblical illiteracy. You've helped us to see a bit of it with that amazing presentation of sand. You are indeed the real Sandman, without a doubt. <laughs> And none of us went to sleep during Joe's amazing presentation. If you'd like to see more of Joe Castillo's incredible artwork and more, please go to Huckabee.tv. We have a connection for you and get you right to Joe to find out more of what he does. Invite him to your church, your community, and watch this in your own congregation. Right now, Keith Bilbrey is going to use his artistic gifts. He'll be drawing us maybe a word picture of what we have coming up on the show. Well, no pressure there. Up next, former Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon, and later a musical gift from the Katinas, all ahead on Huckabee. Well, all year long, Samaritan's Purse has been able to give the gifts of physical aid and the gospel of Christ because of your practical financial gifts and prayer. As someone who has seen firsthand the incredible work of Samaritan's Purse and have been able to see what they do all over the world, I just want to say thanks for your generosity. And if you haven't already, I hope you'll prayerfully consider joining the mission of Samaritan's Purse this Christmas by going to their website or calling them today. Thanks and God bless. But well, what if having the wrong political views could get you canceled? I mean, not just from social media, but from your bank. You may be surprised, but some conservatives say it's already happened to them. And that's why there is a need for alternative banking options. My next guest served two terms as governor of Oklahoma. Now she is a board member of a brand new bank that aims to help patriots stash their cash without fear of being canceled just because of their political views. Please welcome to the show, Governor Mary Fallon. Governor, great having you here. Thank Governor, you. Governor, good to see you, yeah. I am totally excited about this, and it's uh, involving you, Dr. Ben Carson, John Rich, who's been on our show several times, Larry Elder and others. What's the genesis of the idea of the Old Glory Bank? Well, you're exactly right. The council culture has affected the banking institutions, and there have been citizens that have had their accounts frozen or canceled because of their views. It could be a view on anything. And so Old Glory Bank, which I'm very proud, it's yeah. based in Oklahoma, yeah. I'm very proud of that. And Old Glory Bank, by the way, bought another bank in Oklahoma, changed the names, the bank's been there 120 years, but it's a digital first banking platform that is an FDIC insured chartered bank that's in Oklahoma, but it's, it's a digital platform to where you can carry your bank in your pocket Hmm. And you can bank, you can pay people, you can accept money, you can deposit your paychecks, and you can bank wherever you live, because that's really how people operate these days. The beauty of the Old Glory Bank concept and the banking platform is that it stands for values. And I think a lot of American people are concerned about values of respecting the flag, you know, saluting the flag, values of freedom, of liberty, of your privacy, of security, of wanting to know that you have someone that's taking care of your hard-earned money you know, hard-earned hard -earned money from regular people, middle-class America, that's put in a financial institution that someone has similar values yeah. to you and won't cancel you out just because you believe in something or maybe don't believe and, in something. And people don't realize, but for example, 
certain gun dealers have been told by their banks, we're not going to let you have a checking account. Exactly. We're not going to have you access credit cards, which basically means you're out of business. So it's happening to firearms dealers. It's happening to pro-life groups right. who are basically being told you are not going to be able to access the bank. I mean, this is, honestly, it it's sounds crazy. like the stuff, mark of the beast business, where you can't do business because the banks decide we don't like your politics. That's just disturbing. Yeah, that's right. And, and that's why Ogori Bank, I think, is going to be a huge success in the nation. I mean, GoFundMe, not too long ago, decided that they were not going to allow people who gave through their platform to give to the truckers in Canada. PayPal announced recently. Now, these are major. Most all of us have done something on PayPal or GoFundMe. So we're not talking about some obscure situation. Well, you'll never get canceled with Ogori Bank. You can express your values, your beliefs, and you'll have people standing with you that believe the same values and beliefs that are traditional American values that are important and made our nation the greatest nation, I think, on the earth. I guess the one way they would get uh, canceled is if they took out a loan and didn't pay it back. <laughs> well, that yeah, might yeah, be a little sure, bit sure. problematic. But, but, you know, I'll, I'll give you a quick example. My, my son, who's 31, hmm. married, expecting his first baby. Wonderful. Congratulations. But he invested a small amount of money, you know, thousands of dollars in his late 20s. He got a call from his best man at his wedding, and he said, hey, I'm sorry, but I've got to, I've got to tell you, I've got to give you your money back because our financial institution doesn't want you to have your money with our account. And he said, well, it's not that much money. What did I do wrong? And he said, well, your mother was governor of Oklahoma. He said, well, that's the key to it. She was, yeah. but she's been out three years, so why would they cancel my account? I don't even live in the same state she lives in. He said, well... I don't know. I was just told I had to cancel your account and give you your money back. So it does happen. It's crazy. If Apple decides that Apple Pay will no longer serve people who have a strong conservative view, uh, you know, that, that takes out a whole bunch of other people. You bet. You bet. So, you know, it's pretty evident that this is a very serious issue. And it's amazing that you guys are putting it together. I wondered, when is somebody going to come out with an alternative? Now they have. And well, you're involved. And it's real exciting. I know there's a lot of people that can't wait for it to come out, and it will be available to everybody in America, no matter what, what your financial condition is, even your businesses. You know, the, as you mentioned, businesses yeah. get canceled. If you're in a certain energy sector, and maybe you're an insurance company that provides for the energy sector, a lot of times in, insurance companies say don't you can't you can't write for the energy sector. Or it, it could be anything. A banking institution say you can't give a loan to the energy sector. Whatever it might be, they get canceled out. It's so, absolutely stunning it's that the commerce between Americans would be prohibited by some financial institution that decides that it is bigger than the Constitution and freedom. Governor Mary Fallon, thank you very much. And for our audience, I hope this will make you think about that uh, maybe the old glory bank model is exactly what you need to be looking at. So if you want to learn more about old glory bank, when you click over to Huckabee.tv, we have links that you can find out more about it and also follow Governor Mary Fallon on social media. Now, this show really is the gift that just keeps on giving. How do I know that? Because Keith Bilbrey is going to present us with the present and the gift of what we have coming up after the break. Well, you know, holiday food options could include a fabulous Syrian dish. Now, in just a moment, we'll prepare one right here. So stay with us on Huckabee. TV and get your very own Made in the USA Huckabee mugs, t-shirts, and more. And Merry Christmas to all. Now, just down the road from the Huckabee Theater is one of my all-time favorite places to eat, and it's called Cafe Rocca. So I've invited Chef Rocca, the owner of this highly acclaimed and award-winning restaurant, which by the way, just happens to be one of the best restaurants for the 14th year in a row. I've asked him to join us this Christmas weekend to give us a lesson on Syrian holiday food. Let me tell you, 
I am in for a real treat. Please give a festive welcome to Chef Rocca. Chef, great to have you here. Thank you, very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. I love what you do in your, it's the yeah. best food and the most unique. I appreciate it. And I've never heard of anyone that didn't love it. You know who introduced me to you? Ricky Skaggs. Ricky Skaggs. And I'll tell you, he, one of the best things Ricky Skaggs ever did for me was take me to Cafe Rocca for All sure. Right. All right, I'm gonna turn it over. You tell us what we're gonna have. For we Christmas. are gonna cook uh, lamb chops. Ah, yeah, that's uh, lamb chops. So the lamb chops come in the rack. We cut it, as you see right here, high skillet or griddle at this point, and we're gonna put Mm. That's the noise you want to hear. People will wonder, how are they? I'll say, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, while mm. these are cooking, actually, we already cooked the vegetables, but we're going to okay. prepare the dressing sauce for these. If you see no seasoning in it, yeah. I don't want the moisture to leave. So you're not pre-seasoning the lamb no. chops? No. By the way, yours, they're the best I've ever had. Yeah. So you'll oh. see the, the reason why in a minute. Okay. So we're going to put about one ounce of vinegar. Okay. Two ounces of lemon juice. Okay. One teaspoon of salt. Okay. And about two cloves of garlic. Always good for garlic. Yeah. And maybe a little bit of black pepper. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna put about, olive about oil. two ounces of extra virgin olive oil. I mean, that's really one of the keys to Mediterranean cooking. It is. Olive oil. And that's very healthy. That's a healthy very good size. Are we gonna flip these? It's cooking quick. Oh, yeah. Such a shame that Trey and Keith aren't going to get any of these. <laughs> I hate that for them. It's not. And <laughs> we are going to whisk. It's not unusual either. I, yeah, I, I don't it. understand. I, we used to help him cook, and we. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Well. Not anymore. And we set this one aside now. Okay. Now, a different way of cooking meat, but it has been we've been doing it for a long time. It works this way. I was going to say, well, every time I've had them at the yeah. restaurant, yeah. I always say they're just amazing. And I never yeah. realized that you do the seasoning after you yes. cook them. Yeah. Uh, so it's different, different meats are treated differently. Yeah. But for these lamb chops, because they're such a delicate. Yeah. And it really, if you miss anything with them, either you're going to end up with a really tough meat or a completely change the texture of the meat completely. Mm. Yeah. Go. And now... Maybe a little hot for me to reach over and grab it off the uh, griddle there. Probably there shouldn't go. do that. Oh, here we go. Now, this is the last before we transfer it to a skillet now. I was going to say, please don't do that with your bare hand. Yes. The gloved yeah. version. Yeah. Go. That would not be good. It's a heavy right thing. Here. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to add the vegetables, which is we grilled earlier. Okay. And the lamb chops. So this skillet. That looks like it's holding some heat already, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Nice little skillet. Uh, uh, the actually made in Tennessee. This is a large skillet. If you drive about an hour uh, from here to the south of Nashville, you'll find the large uh, uh, mm. manufacturer. Wonderful. So these are cooking now. And you go ahead, we go ahead and prep our salad. Pre-cook the, yeah. uh, the vegetables before yeah. I can see they've been grilled. Yeah. There you go. I think it's interesting, maybe while we're watching this happen, yeah. you're a trained attorney. You, you, yes. you have a law degree. I do. But you decided that rather than sue people, you wanted to please people. You opened a restaurant, for God's sake. I think it's just awesome. Completely different crowd. <laughs> and a lot of these, these are the recipes that you grew up with in Syria yes. as a kid. Watching your grandmother yes, right. and your family cook, and you you weren't really taught how to cook. You just caught it from watching. I yes, think. I never in my dream I thought I'm, I'll be cooking for a living, but I enjoyed cooking. Obviously, cook, yeah. And we enjoy yeah. eating it. All right. And you're so, good at it. You're. I don't know if you were a good lawyer, but you're a heck of a <laughs> restaurateur. I don't, I don't need you to go back into law. There's enough of them around here. Yep. We need you to keep cooking. By the way, the hummus at Cafe Rocca, there's nothing, they've never had hummus any better than his. Okay. Absolutely fantastic. Now it's the 
You got another skillet. More, yeah. It's getting scary. What's that going to do? This is going to be the moment of truth, Governor. Oh. And we are. So you just put now the mixture of yeah. stuff that you made. And we're done. Uh -huh. Now we're plating. We have a little, this one a little bit uh, uh, get together here, and we are going to go ahead and whatever left over from that dressing, yeah. we're going to put it on the salad here. That Whoa. Kind of mix. Yep. Double purpose. Yep. Salad dressing yep. and also the seasoning for the lamb. Yes. Amazing. I would never have thought that. And by the way, because of the heat applied to that one, uh -huh. you'll have a really different uh, flavor profile. You'll never guess all the same thing at all. You'll try it in a minute. Interesting. This is a wonderful Christmas dinner for sure. And it's healthy. It looks terrific. And it is. That's yeah. the thing about Mediterranean yeah. cooking. It's yeah. so much healthier. I yeah. won't be able to finish the show. I will be eating dinner. Um, I'm sure Keith and Trey will be able to take over and uh, take care of that. This is one of the cheese I make. That's right, because cheese, yeah. your family made... That was part of their heritage, yeah. making cheese, yes. right? I'm a fifth generation cheese. Well, you know, uh, it says in the scripture, blessed are the cheese makers. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> it, it, I, what scripture is that? I, it's, it's, in, it's in Matthew chapter 5. Oh, I'll yes. Go. So we're done. We need to, uh, to go ahead and uh, plate now. I think so. You see, lamb chops are very happy now. Mm. That looks fantastic. There you go. Hey, it's time to plate that food and eat it, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. And you always make it look so much better than I can ever make things look. I mean, even if I could cook it that well, which I oh, cannot, uh -huh. and I do like to cook, but I'm just not that good at what you do, but it just always looks like something out of a magazine. Thank you, Governor. I hope you enjoy it, too. Mm. That now, tells this you. is... The chops. Wow. I'm gonna add a little bit of this to okay. this to the rice. See, that'll make that rice taste better. That's won't right. It? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And the last touch is this is a reduction of chocolate and pomegranate okay. uh, juice, but you could substitute it for balsamic vinegar. All right. Kind of give the same thing. Just put that on the lamb chops and, and all over chop. everything. Yeah, and right here, and that's what she wrote. Outstanding. I, want to I don't see a fork, but by golly, I won't need one for the lamb chops. Oh my gosh. Mm. That is so tender and so tasty. Mm -mm. You know what? If you are ever in Hendersonville to visit the show, and you should be, um, you need to be sure and add a visit to Cafe Braca. Be sure and put that on your itinerary. And be sure, by the way, to try the red tea. It is a very healthy, natural tea made with flowers from the Middle East. Absolutely amazing. Want to know how to know? Go to Huckabee.tv. Tell you all about Chef Rocca and his great restaurant. Right now, while I continue to eat the lamb chops, Keith is going to dish out what we have coming up next. Well, you don't have to explain it to me or Trey. you got to talk to your wife because she didn't get any either. I sure do. The Katinas are coming down the chimney to talk to Mike and perform a special Christmas song. It's next on Huckabee. week for legendary singer-songwriter Sam Moore and expert illusionist Leon Atia on Huckabee. I'll tell you, it would be very hard to equal that phenomenal food that we just had, the lamb chops. But real close to it is the amazing music by Trey Corley and the Music City Connection. Let's give them a big hand for some wonderful Christmas music this season. Well, tonight's musical guests were raised on the island of Samoa. Their background gave them a very unique sound that's made them favorites worldwide. They just finished their I Need Jesus Christmas tour, and we thought, what better way to celebrate this Christmas weekend than with their music? It is such a joy to welcome them back to the show, the Katinas. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. You know, I always say... 
it's great to have some wonderful guests one time, but when we can get you to come back because you had a good time and share with us your amazing talents, how much of a blessing that is. And thank you for doing that. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank so you for much. having us. You guys, at one point in your career, had an opportunity to just go out into the secular music world. And uh, I mean, it was a wide open opportunity. You chose to stick to music about the gospel mm. and about Christ. Why? What was it that said, this is our lane, we're staying in it? Yeah, we, we did have an opportunity and, uh, and to go to New York and, and we actually signed a deal. But in the, mid, in the midst of the process of trying to uh, solidify songs and market us, it was back when you know, the, the days of marketing records took like six months. We just couldn't, it didn't sit well with us because we remembered the story of our dad who came back from the Vietnam mm -hmm. War as an alcoholic and had a uh, supernatural, radical transformation in his own life and was uh, freed from alcoholism and literally had a 180 degree turnaround and uh, later on became a Pente Pentecostal preacher. Wow. Former Marine, Pentecostal yeah. preacher. Now that's the spectrum right yeah, there. That's a bummer <laughs> combination yeah. when you're a kid. <laughs> but so, you know, I think just um, revisiting his story um, we were just thankful that we came to our senses, so to speak, and said, man, this is, this is not the path for us. Uh, we want to sing about a message of, about hope and love. And that's what we've been doing, Governor, for the last 30 plus years. And you've been doing it in an amazing way. And, you know, I, I'm glad you didn't go that route. You would have been incredibly successful, mm -hmm. uh, probably won Grammys and been a multi-platinum selling band. Mm -hmm. Uh, but your life is influencing people in such a positive way. Wow. You know, and I know that growing up in Samoa, you had a lot of different musical influences. I like to say they got some influences there, then they got Samoa influences <laughs> and they That's good. came to the U.S., <laughs> right? That's good. Yes. Yes. Well, we, we, are, we are not going to let them be here without doing some music. So, Keith, while the Katinas get ready to perform, why don't you tell our viewers how they can hear more of the incredible music of the Katinas. Just go to Huckabee.tv for links to their music, tour schedule, and more. You can also see an exclusive performance of I Need Jesus. We also need a lot of Christmas these days. Now to welcome in the holiday with their song, Tennessee Christmas, with Trey Corley and the Music City Connection and Mike on bass, here are the Katinas. <laughs> Tinsel towns for me There's a parade 
signing off the inviting still I think I'm gonna keep another ten this ten Christmas the only Christmas for me where the love circles around us like the gifts beneath the tree where we say it's a warm holiday, it's the only place to be, but attend the Tennessee Christmas, it's the only Christmas for Christmas for me.